Hello and uh, welcome back to another episode of Play the Trombone with Mr. Cole. We're up to episode 5 now and we're going to look at pages 17, 19 and 20 in your book Team Brass. So pick up your trombone and can I remind you of your grip? Left hand, thumb behind that stay, three fingers behind that stay, one finger there, and make sure you lift your trombone up to you. I don't want to see any of you bending down over your trombone down here like that. Hold it up. And we're going to start off with B flat, the same as we always do, the first, the bottom note, the lowest note you can get with first position. <laughs> We're going to do it slightly different today. We're going to use our tongue and keep your tongue behind your top teeth. And C, sixth position. D, fourth position. F first position again and make sure you tighten your lips a little bit otherwise you'll you'll go back to the first note and we don't want that do we and then of course the note you learned in the last episode episode four G, which is in fourth position, like D. But again, you tighten your lips, blow a little faster. What you could do is you could pause the video now and just do that again on your own, but I'm going to press on. If you want to press on with me, don't pause. Carry on playing. So we're going to look at page 17 and... The piece we're going to look at is two lines up from the bottom of the page and it's called slow round. If you don't know what the word round means musically, it means that you one person starts and then when that person gets to a point in the tune, the second person starts at the beginning and they move on and then possibly a third person may join in a bit like London's burning or something like that. And of course, we all know what the word slow means. So let's start and have a look at it. It's B flat to D. But if you look at those first two notes, the first one is filled in, so it's one count. The second note is hollow, so it's two counts. So we go one, one, two, one, and then the next four are all one, so they're fairly straightforward. So this is how slow round should sound. noticed there was a, a G, one single solitary G in that piece. I wonder if you can spot where it was. Well, I'll leave you to carry on looking and I'll turn over the page. And I'm going to look at page 19. And on page 19, we have some very long notes, which we're not going to look at at the moment because they're the kind of notes you need to practice whilst you're looking at a comic or the television or something. We're going to look at, again, two lines up from the bottom. Here it is. Slurred, slow notes. Now, slurs are a little bit like weightlifting for your lips. Instead of, instead of pushing weights up and down with your arms, you're going to change notes up and down with your lips. It's easier to go down than it is to go up. So start by playing a, 
F and then relax your lips and the note will drop to a B flat. <laughs> exercise is a really good exercise for what we call flexibility of your lips, making your lips flexible enough to, to change from the shape you need for a low note to the shape you need for a high note, um, all fairly quickly and effortlessly. So I'm going to play through the line slurred slow notes. And there's nothing difficult about the slide positions on this particular line because they're all first position. So you're all I have no excuse for, for getting the wrong position on this exercise. that all of the, most of the notes are the same length. There are either two beat notes, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if they're hollow with no sticks on, they're four beats. So they are twice as long as the two beat notes. You might have also noticed that I was taking enormous gasps of air. Playing the trombone or any largish um, brass instrument does require that you breathe in an enormous amount of air. If you could imagine a two litre box of ice cream in front of your mouth, only it's like a balloon. And before you play a note, you have to quickly suck that amount of space inside you. So I'm going to show you how to do that breath again. Actually, you don't need to take your mouthpiece away from your mouth if you keep it there and you just glue through the sides. That's the correct way to breathe. And the next part of that exercise is to do the same thing in second position. Take a breath then and run out. Then third position. You could go all the way down to seventh position, which is a long way out, just before the very, very end. And then you could work your way up again. That'd probably take you about five minutes, but it's very good exercise for your lips or chops as we trombonists call them right um, I'm going to turn over now to page 20 because on page 20 there is something at the top called a regal fanfare and now a regal fanfare does sound slightly royal and grand now if the Queen was going to come and visit your school um, in a couple of weeks time she would need some kind of a announcement that she was arriving and traditionally royalty has had the state trumpeters or any other trumpet trumpeters that happen to be handy to announce their arrival and they play something which is an announcement musical announcement it's called a fanfare so this is something that the trumpets could join in with. They have their own part and the trombones have um, a separate part, which is on the top line of bar uh, of page 20. This is how it goes. And I'm going to play it straight through and then I'm going to explain it. Now, 
played it all the same volume. If you were being critical, and I hope you are, you would notice that I'm supposed to have been quiet in the third bar. But I was concentrating at the moment on just playing you the right notes and the right rhythms. If you look very carefully, you will see that it's slow, quick, quick, one, two. Slow, quick, quick, one, two. One, one, two. One tied over, one, 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 one. And then the same thing repeats. Slow, quick, quick, slow. So this is really all about playing in time. When you're playing in a group of people, it's a bit like, I may have said this before, but it's something I feel is very true. It's a bit like the red arrows are flying in formation and each plane knows where they are in relation to their, the plane next to them, in front of them, behind them. And so you have to be going exactly the same speed. So the beat of the music must be the same for every person. So I'm going to go through that again and you can join in this time. This being the last time I'm going to play it, I hope I'm going to remember to be quiet in the third bar and then get very loud again for the for the uh, fifth bar. Here we go. learn their part and all of you learn your trombone part as soon as we get back to school after this pesky virus has disappeared forever then we'll be able to possibly practice it in assembly when uh, the head teacher comes in anyway it's goodbye for now and keep practicing that's the key practice 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 if you can nice to see you bye bye